I'm Angie Kantz, and this is part two of Deep Dive into the Character Evolution of Daryl Dixon from The Walking Dead for Post Show Recaps. Today I'm going to be talking about Daryl's growth into his prison Daryl persona. While I'm mostly going to be focusing on season two, I am going to be referencing moments from other seasons, so please be aware if you're trying to avoid spoilers. The first episode of season two shows us the dramatic change from where we last left Daryl. He's working in tandem with T-Dog, scavenging through cars and siphoning gas like they've been stealing other people's stuff for months. Next, Daryl saves T-Dog from walkers. Not once. Not twice. But three times. How is it T-Dog stayed alive this long anyway? I'd say he's over any racial issues he may have had. Daryl is irritated at Dale for not letting him know that T-Dog was sick, as if he's assuming that he couldn't or wouldn't help. Why'd you wait till now to say anything? Got my brother's stash. Daryl could have very easily kept Merle's antibiotics for himself, but he's showing the group again and again that he's there to protect them. He's even giving them Heisenberg's blue meth. What's he gotta do to show his commitment to these people? It's first class. There's still tension between Dale and Daryl as Daryl feels that Dale is always questioning his judgment and integrity. You let her? I'm done out of my ass, old man. Rick sent her. But when Sophia goes missing, Daryl starts tracking her immediately. It becomes clear that he has skills no one else does, and Rick lets him lead the search. Dirt, grass. You want a lesson in tracking, or you won't find that girl and get her ass off that interstate? When the group becomes split, it's Daryl who offers to stay behind in case Sophia shows up. With all of his emotional and cultural challenges, he's tentatively becoming a reliable leader within the group as best as he knows how. But this doesn't come without a struggle. The Walking Dead has these moments where the characters overcome massive traumas and are reborn as tougher, more authentic versions of themselves. For Glenn, it's being captured by the governor. For Carl, it's killing Lori. For Carol, it's being locked in the tombs for three days. For Rick, it's killing Joe the Claimer. Season 2's Chupacabra shows us Daryl's moment, where Daryl's conflict between his wild thing persona and his role in his new family comes to a head. This episode is all about chasing illusions. For Daryl, that means chasing the illusion of finding Sophia. It also means chasing the illusion of Merle being the kind of brother Daryl needs him to be. A chupacabra is a blood-sucking reptilian dog with legendary sightings not unlike the Loch Ness Monster or Bigfoot. Daryl claims to have seen a chupacabra for real Z's. Daryl is willing to believe in the impossible. This wild dog represents the brute survival instinct that he has had to develop. It's about him reaching down into the core of his own strength and self-reliance. This is not the last time a dog is used to represent Daryl. In season four, we see Daryl trying to coax a stray one-eyed dog to come into the house with him and Beth, but like Daryl, the dog is too afraid to trust people. And last, the final illusion that Daryl is chasing is that he could survive all alone without other people. At the beginning of the episode, he has a very telling exchange with Rick. You okay on your own? Better on my own. He believes he is stronger alone. He hates relying on others, and his insecurity about where he stands in the group is confusing to him. You got a point? We're just chatting. My point. It lets you off the hook. You don't owe us anything. Remember that Daryl is struggling with this idea that he's not seen as an equal by the other members of the group. Rick and Carol have been the only ones to treat him with respect. But Rick makes a critical error in this scene. By referring to Daryl as you and to the group as us, he makes it clear that in his mind, Daryl is still not part of them. Daryl goes off searching alone for Sophia. The search for Sophia is very personal for Daryl. It gives him a purpose, gives his abilities value. We learn in this season that Daryl got lost in the woods for nine days as a child himself, except with his father on a bender and Merle in jail, no one even noticed. He had to look after himself. He had to find his own way home. This is why Daryl never counts on anyone but himself. You know, the difference is, Sophia's got people looking for her. I call that an advantage. He wants to be the adult he never had. He's looking for his own lost childhood, trying to make right the wrongs that were done to him. To give up on Sophia is to say that he himself wasn't worth saving. Daryl wants to be with the kind of people who care when a child goes missing, where a mother's love is unconditional. On his search for Sophia, Daryl finds her doll in the river. On his way back, his horse spooks and throws him down the steep ravine back into the river. Son of a bitch! 
Oh. This is the very first line out of his mouth in season one, which is a clue that he's reverted right back to where he started at this point. His last bolt has pierced him through his side and he's very hurt. We see Daryl hitting bottom out there. This is isolation and self-reliance in the extreme. He has to climb a steep ravine with a bolt through his side. He goes from being the tough redneck to the scared little kid, lost and alone in the woods. He chastises himself, the survivor, the chupacabra in him trying to toughen him up. Oh, come on. You don't have? Stop being such a pussy. <sighs> no one is coming for him. It becomes clear that he has been lying to himself. He is not stronger alone. This is everything he wants to escape. He does a big push forward, but then falls all the way back to the ground, back to the beginning. For Daryl, it is always this. This loneliness. This total isolation. He's losing hope. He has no one to turn to. So in his desperation, his subconscious reverts to his go-to, the other person he couldn't find, the blood-sucking reptile himself, Merle. Merle immediately begins on an abusive rant. Try like hell to find you, bro. Like hell you did. You split, man. Let out first chance you got. You let out. All you had to do was wait. This is a very loaded line after we learn in season three that Merle left Daryl alone with their abusive father. Merle starts insulting the group and making fun of Daryl for thinking he could ever be one of them. You're nothing but a freak to them. Redneck trash. This is Daryl's biggest fear, that he isn't good enough to be part of the group. This is likely the voice he hears in his head all the time, the root of his conflict. They ain't your kin. Your blood. In his subconscious, Daryl feels like he needs to choose between his blood family and his new family. This is what Carol is referring to to Beth in season three when she says that guys like Merle get into your head, make you believe that you deserve the abuse, that no one else in the world would want you, that you're alone, stuck with your abuser. Get up on your feet or I have to kick your teeth in. In his hallucination, Merle is kicking him to get up, but when he comes to, he realizes that a walker is attacking his foot. Alone, abandoned by Merle again, Daryl is whimpering as he fights off the walker. His little boy desperation here leads us to believe he is reliving his experience surviving his abusive childhood. When a second walker appears, he has no bolts left in his crossbow, so he pulls the one from his body to shoot at the walker. He binds his wound the way Merle instructed in the dream. He wants to believe that someone is in his corner, but we see when Merle returns in season three that he is, in fact, never right. This version of Merle who gets Daryl moving and tries to protect him is truly an illusion. Some old bitch was right. Totally alone, Daryl reverts right back to primitive survival mode, the chupacabra, the strongest of wild things, never to be seen, never to be trapped. Stripped of all emotion and need for others, Daryl eats a squirrel like a wild dog. He makes a trophy necklace out of the zombie ears and tries to climb the ravine again. Merle appears to him again on the climb up, but this time he's not helping Daryl. <laughs> Daryl is pulling himself out of his own past, climbing under the weight of his own injuries, under the litany of abuses being flung at him by Merle. I did better when he was missing. <laughs> come on. What waits for him at the top is not, in fact, Merle. It's the group. Grab your friend Rick's hand. Daryl pulls himself to level ground, effectively choosing Rick over Merle, his past, and the sentence of solitude. Yeah, you better run! When Daryl returns to the farm, he is so beat up and wild they don't even recognize him. Rick raises his gun like Daryl as a rabid animal. They don't know him. They've never seen him like this, at his worst, his most raw. He looks Rick in the eye and challenges him. It's the third time you pointed that thing on my head. You gonna pull the trigger or what? He's calling him out, saying, if you think I'm an animal, then shoot me. If not, start treating me like I'm part of this group. It's a very rational and civilized argument. But before Rick can answer, Andrea shoots him. No! They all rush to Daryl's side, giving Daryl his answer about how they feel about him. They pull off Daryl's zombie necklace so that Herschel doesn't see it but this is also a symbolic gesture. 
Daryl doesn't need to be the wild dog alone in the woods. They carry him to a bed inside the house where he is fed and healed. Unlike Merle, they take care of him. He's part of the group and doesn't need his necklace to survive anymore. When Carol leans over and kisses him on the head, he actually flinches. He has no idea how to receive tenderness. In the bed, he pulls the covers up to cover the evidence of his childhood abuse. Despite the abuse making him different from the rest of the group, he is now a part of them. You can see his uneasiness as this idea begins to sink in. Every bit as good as them. Every bit. Rick can no longer rely on Shane. Slowly, Rick is relying more and more on Daryl instead. It becomes very clear after 18 miles out when Rick and Shane almost kill each other that something has to give. There's a reason why they're showing us Daryl's back with the angel wings in this scene. Just in case we missed it, Daryl is the guardian angel of the group. He is pure, unwavering, never faltering, hopelessly loyal, utterly responsible, willing to do anything for the group. That thing you did last night. Ain't no reason you should do all the heavy lifting. But who is this Daryl on the porch? Just two days before, he was this guy. What are you doing? Keeping an eye on you. Ain't you a peach? If you spent half your time minding your daughter's business instead of sticking your nose in everybody else's, she'd still be alive. What the hell happened in between? Dale happened. Don't underestimate the influence Dale has on Daryl. He's the complete opposite of Daryl. Intellectual, sophisticated, mature. Daryl sees Dale as everything he is not, everything that holds him in contempt. While Carol insisting that he get mad at her so she can show him that there is nothing he can do that will make her stop caring for him is critical on an emotional level, having Dale also accept him on a moral level is far more life-changing for Daryl. The loss of Sophia and his inability to find her has deeply affected Daryl. When the group are holding Randall prisoner, Dale goes to talk to Daryl where he has isolated himself on the farm. The point of me coming up here is to get away from you people. It's gonna take more than that. Dale is telling him that he's part of the group whether he likes it or not. Dale represents their humanity, what's left of civilized society. He's just a kid, Dale says of Randall. This is exactly what Daryl says about Noah in season five. A damn kid. This shows how Daryl becomes more civilized the more he matures. Who says we're civilized anymore? Oh, the world we know is gone. But keeping our humanity? That's a choice. Daryl fears that Merle is right, and the members of the group like Dale and Shane see him as mere redneck trash to be scraped off their shoes. Shane picks a fight with Daryl. In his police cap, Shane pushes him into old patterns, and Daryl even calls him a stupid cop. You can see that Daryl is surprised when the group sides with him. You're not a doll. You know what the hell you're talking Man, look, about. I'm just right, saying what right. needs to be said. You know, if she was alive out there, saw you coming, all messed out with your buck knife, your geek ears around your neck, she would run in the other direction. Shut up! Right, right, wait, stop. Stop. just stop! Hey, 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 I'll beat right. you right. Boy, back off! Keep your hands off. Shane is becoming the outsider. Daryl knows that Shane killed Otis without anyone telling him, and he knows that if Rick doesn't see it, it's because he doesn't want to. Daryl is so perplexed that Rick would choose a man like Shane over him, he wants no part of them. It's like I said, the group's broken. Shane is against all the people making rules, that it's the rules that complicate things. But Daryl needs rules, a code. That's why he and Shane are incompatible. This is why he thinks he's better off alone. As long as Shane is part of the group, the group is broken. But this is where Dale flips the script on Daryl. Torturing people? That isn't you. You're a decent man. So is Rick. Shane, he's different. Dale has completely changed his opinion about Daryl, and Daryl doesn't realize it until this moment. Your opinion makes a difference. Never in Daryl's life has anyone like Dale said anything like that to him. It's at the group meeting right after this conversation you, that we first see this? Prison Daryl. He's the gravelly-toned, rock-solid voice of reason. Just another mouth to feed. It may be a He's Rick's right-hand man, with only one thing on his mind, 
protecting the group at all costs. If we do this, we're saying there's no hope. Rule of law is dead. There is no civilization. It's becoming clear that Dale's morality has no place in this world. His civilized world has been murdered and him along with it. This is what Dale represents, and that's why he's got to go. Of course it's lost and dead. Daryl realizes that Dale had respect for him after all, and he returns the favor by calling him brother. Sorry, brother. Dale could, could get under your skin. I couldn't always read him, but he could read us. He saw people for who they were. He knew things about us. The truth. Who we really are. The next day, Daryl is reborn. Solid. Dependable. Ready to be whatever Rick needs him to be. So you good with all this? I'll see you and I trading haymakers on the side of the road. Don't be to win that fight. Daryl is saying as clearly as he knows how that he is not Shane. At the end of season two, Rick is frustrated with the group doubting him. I'm keeping this group together, alive. And I've been doing that all along, no matter what. I didn't ask for this. I killed my best friend for you people, for Christ's sake. Notice that Daryl is the only one not freaked out by this. His expression here is one of pure awe and respect. He's the one who saw Shane for what he was, and was resentful of Rick not facing it head on. By this sacrifice for the good of the group, in Daryl's eyes, Rick has proven his worth and commitment. A true kindred spirit, all his doubts are extinguished. More than any other character on the show, people are constantly calling Daryl's name. Daryl! 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 This is a new rule for Daryl, and at the farm, he pushes back against it. You want those two idiots having us ride? I'm done looking for people. This has terrible consequences, because Lori can't drive a car without crashing it. He realizes how needed he is. The next time Lori asks for help, he's all... You got it. Thank you. He rescues Carol from the farm after it's overrun by walkers. He's on his motorcycle, watching the fire burn. He's just chilling. His life is fine. He's the one pulling everyone together to meet up on the freeway. This is his role. He's the tracker. If you're lost, he'll find you. If you're hungry, he'll feed you. If you're in charge, he'll listen to you. If you're outgunned, he'll fight for you. So I hope you like the deep dive into the character evolution of Daryl Dixon. Be sure to watch part three where I talk about Daryl becoming fully entrenched into his prison Daryl identity, as well as his relationship with Carol. Please let me know your questions and comments right here, and don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitter. Until next time, don't look back.